Okay, we are back. Now we will talk about the bake uh, tools. I mean the bake kit. This is probably a starting point, but there is a lot of stuff that I will probably add to those uh, as it's it's really fine and fine tuned, and I think it can leverage your your human workflow on a daily uh, basis. So. Let's do it. Uh, we go to this monster load training scene and we go here to the bake tools and we will load a scene that is just uh, populated with high and low um, polygon meshes. Uh, this was done with um, mesh fusion, of course, you might guess. And so usually what you are doing uh, with the bake tools is set up some stuff um, on a daily basis and for instance here we have a low polygon mesh uh, list and we have just a prefix and a b c d um, markers and that's all and we have the high polygon mesh we don't we probably didn't care at that point about the naming but i wanted to create a simple uh, actions that lets you Select, select uh, the first um, low polygon mesh, then the high poly, and automatically rename those uh, accordingly. Create some tags. So, for instance, here under the tags, uh, I have a new mesh type uh, tag for the high poly and the low poly. And so everything is set. You see, it automatically um, disable the visibility uh, of those uh, meshes. This is just by design, but you can probably totally uh, change it if you want. So here, for instance, I auto hide. You can uncheck it if you prefer. Uh, you can also select the high poly first and then the low poly. And you can also define your own um, uh, prefix. Yeah, that's the prefix um, according to uh, your own workflow. So in my case, I'm using this because I am using a lot um, Marmoset toolbag actually. And so this is just basic options and not populating those here, but if you want, I can do it. Um, so we'll continue uh, on setting up the scene. So for instance, here also we have a basic um, stuff. We have a mesh that is uh, created with a smooth uh, subdivision um, system, right? I'm just pressing the tab key to make it smooth. Actually, I've not implemented to detect this and freeze the mesh uh, for the exports, but I can probably do this at the end. So anyway, I will uh, go back and hide those. Okay, so we select first the low poly, the high poly, create the pairs, do this again here. It's just a matter of just seconds, right? and we are selecting those in order so now that everything is set we can go back and show uh, those uh, meshes and we have a simple but really powerful uh, tool to create all the cages so for instance here we have this mesh and we have a weight map not a weight map a morph map over here that is creating the cage you see that i set up already the cage and edited uh, those uh, specifically for, for for this one and using also the normals uh, of the different islands over here, the UV islands. So it really didn't deform in a wrong uh, way, right? It's controlled. And that's the, the that's the way you are, uh, you, you are supposed to make uh, those um, cages. So we have this morph map and I was thinking, yeah, how oh, we can do this uh, more simply, okay? You can, of course, select those and create uh, a morph influenced with the cage and then you freeze everything, then you create the export, etc. It takes a lot of time, right? So I'm just uh, checking what are the tags, the mesh tags over here. And when I press this preview cage mesh data, I automatically create uh, the cage export. The cage morph map is just erased. It just freeze, right? But you, you 
just have a preview of this. And so when I was uh, creating this, I was also looking a lot uh, on creating tools for um, exporting stuff for um, Marmoset. set. And this is what I'm talking uh, about now. I created, uh, completely rebuilt the, the Marmoset set toolbag live link that I started to create. It was a little bit buggy and, and that was based on uh, a template uh, scene that was loaded. Uh, so it was a bit fixed, right? And for that reason, and in order to use the naming convention uh, to uh, automatically load and place the cage, the low and the high polygon uh, meshes, I decided to change it. So now I will close everything here. Don't save. And I will show back uh, the marmoset set example. So here in the live link we have this oh i opened another scene okay so here we have just a, just basically a bit more um edited um high polygon mesh but that's just for the purpose of the video to show you the de the detail how it uh, bakes everything so here we have uh, the same basic stuff as usual you select the high and the and low. I will go back and get the marmoset set this time. Uh, marmoset set um, toolback popover. And I have also the set bake pairs over here. So I would just set those. Of course, I can use the previous scene, but this is just for convenience to show you. Everything is integrated and shared across all the the kits and that's that's why it's better in my opinion than the the older one so now that i've set the big pairs you have also access to uh, edge padding uh, if you are baking for instance in my case here i have that's also part of the bake tools you have edge padding presets so when you are making some some bakes uh, related to the resolution of the bake uh, if you are baking with 2k maps or 4k maps you have to change the edge padding pre uh, settings and it's always in the in the preferences in the field rendering i think and you have this bake uv border that is set here but it's not really accessible and available uh, quickly so i want i wanted to change this and so for instance here by using the quick uh, tag um, tools. I have some color ID um, function over here. So I've made different uh, section sets to define uh, different color. Okay, so this is just for the colors, the albedo or I can say, no, the material ID um, pass. Okay, so when you want to make the bakes, you will probably use the edge padding presets and the quick tag for making those because it's it's not materials um, override right it's based on selection sets so as it's based on selection sets if you take a look at the mesh the low polygon mesh it still uh, use the material only right so if i go to the material you see it used the handles the mat uh, material so it's not an override and you can directly send this to any um, any engine any any software so designer painter marmo set anything and so it didn't erase the material uh, handles so it's much more simple for this way okay so talk about the quick tag uh, stuff but this is something you already have in the current release but now i can this define that i would create uh, AO, ambient occlusion map, tangent space map, object space 2, and maybe, yeah, positions. And I will just send this directly uh, to um, Marmoset. So I have nothing selected and same stuff using the tags. It will walk through all the scene and create the cage and all that stuff. Everything will be automatic. So I just click here. It will start. Uh, exporting the files and I will show you where they are so in my case it's creating 
uh, in my temp folder, a uh, folder called uh, small marmoset toolbag labeling. It's the same as usual with uh, the Ryzen UV live link or the Pixelflux um, live link. It's the same. But you see now we have the low polygon mesh exported, the high polygon mesh exported with specific settings, so using uh, the materials and stuff. Uh, the cage also uh, is exported and there is a close relation between the low and the cage, right? It's perfectly um, fine-tuned for this. So in Modo, I created also the, the, the name of those, um, of those uh, textures uh, previously. It's for the AO, Omblant Occlusion, Curvature, Object ID. So you see, I defined a specific um, prefix um, at the end. But if you want to use uh, the already include um, default um, prefix, probably I will uh, expose this in the preferences. Okay, so let's go here. We are in Marvel Set. We have loaded automatically um, our uh, items. And now in the bake project, everything is set. So actually, I have a thing, just a little uh, difficulties with this um, export. And the Python uh, script is actually not uh, fine-tuned enough to get correctly the, the, the output. So I set it, but there is something I need to, to check with the normal set. Uh, toolback team because um, it's not setting it correctly. You see that I set it correctly here as a PSD, but when I press the bake button, it's not using it. Um, so I will check all over here. We have the normal, the normal um, object normal. So dungeon space normal, object space normal, position curvature. Um, we will uncheck this and ambient occlusion. So we are in 2K and we just have to click on the bake button. So of course it says, yeah, you have a error with the name, but you see it pops up and populate and open the correct folder. So I don't know why, but I have to check this, um, you know, to fix this bug, but it's probably doable. So I use the same uh, name as this one, pick uh, save, and now it's baking uh, stuff. It might probably um, slow uh, slow down the stream while it's working. So it's really simple because it's pushing back, uh, pushing the data without any. I mean, you, you when you are doing the exports by yourself, you probably uh, can make uh, many different mistakes, right? And here I'm just pressing the P for previewing the the results. And I'm actually in Marmor Set 3, right? And it's also working with the four uh, release that I bought um, recently. It's perfectly working, and as you can see, the detail is perfectly uh, fine-tuned. It's it's working. So as I said, um, the high polygon mesh actually is not tessellated. So I will probably um, get a look at the at the script and update this also. To detect if you have some uh, tab um, modificator, modificator that is um, enabled on the mesh and freeze those um, those polygons in order to make the, the export and then go back to the previous state. So it's perfectly possible, right? But now it works. Uh, you have all the different uh, data here and you can preview also the different maps as usual in Marmon set. It's perfectly working. So also what is great here is that it used um, the tagging at, the, at the, the end of the name to use the high, the low and the cage. So everything is correctly set up, right? There is no surprise at all. You can see correctly things and yeah, that's probably good. So I just have to now to close the scene, don't save. And as you can see, everything is loaded here uh, in model so we have to go in the shading and you see we have the ambient occlusion the tunnel space normal map the object space normal map and the position 
those are set already to diffuse color for some of those so i will probably uh, uncheck those and you see that the the tangent space normal map is set to normal and it's working and it's perfectly either in pair with uh, the result in marmor set right so yeah it works that way the ambient occlusion is using an opacity and a multiply blend mode it's up to you um, if i got some feedback from you uh, probably i will ch change it a bit um, it can be useful uh, but this is just for previewing and checking okay everything is done is okay the normal map is okay there's no flipping there's no problem with, with seams and stuff but yeah it works um, so i hope you enjoyed this video we've talked about all the new stuff uh, into the this release of course there's side stuff like i centralize many stuff in the in the in the kit like all the the small dot uh, blah 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 uh, comments that i've uh, created are now shared across the different kits so it can leverage the system and lets you use many different uh, actions and and script and comments from all various um, kits that i've made and mix them up to get the best of it um so yeah you have some renaming of a few commands uh, occurring um, i externalized also the preferences uh, when you are into your system preference uh, you have and i was a fan of it right but probably some people might didn't like this uh, behavior so now the copy and paste um setup uh, that you have here so deselect element after copying select pasted element deselect element after pasting it's completely free you can do your whatever you want okay now it's completely uh, outside of any config files in the kit so you can do what you want um it's much more reliable uh, in that manner um so yeah uh, that's probably it uh, it's about two months, two or three months of, of work on those. There's more under the hood, but I didn't expose everything actually. Um, I corrected also some bugs on color kits, uh, color bar kits and uh, labels and tooltips. But yeah, it's done. I, I will stop this video because it's probably too long now. Um, have a good day. Um, enjoy your work with Modo it's release after release getting better you probably like the the new boolean uh, stuff uh, coming as uh, the speed up is really impressive there is a lot of stuff that is coming up on various areas i i'm sure so yeah continue to use it it's a reliable uh, tool see you next time uh, give me some feedback on the videos bye bye